Hello, I'm Jackie von Zifferbergs and I'm the director and founder of the Solution Focused Institute of South Africa. Currently, I'm interviewing prominent solution focused therapists across the world to find out their ideas about solution focused therapy. Today, I'm really excited. I have Matthew Selekman on the line. Matthew is a family therapist in Chicago, Illinois. He specializes in working with children, teenagers, and their families. Matthew has written numerous books, some of which are Solution Focused Therapy with Children, Pathways to Change, and Changing Self Destructive Behavior. Matthew is currently writing a book on working with high-risk adolescents. He also travels the world and even though it's only June, he's been to Turkey, Belgium, South Korea and the UK. So Matthew, welcome and thank you so much for joining me, seeing that you have such a busy, busy schedule. Well, it's a great pleasure to talk with you and I look forward to my visit to South Africa next year. Yes, we're very excited about having you. So Matthew, tell us a bit about how you started using Solution Focused Therapy and how you started integrating it into your work. Well, I came into Solution Focused Therapy back in 1985. I worked with Michelle Weiner Davis, who right. was Steve DeShazer's number one prodigy. And she and I ran a youth service clinic and we were one of a few in the whole world of programs that used a solution-focused free therapy model as a house model. Right. And I was running an adolescent substance abuse program. And it was really beautiful for me to see coming in as a family therapist, having had training in structural strategic family therapy, how effective solution focus was with very difficult adolescent cases with long treatment histories of drug abuse, uh, maybe the parents had alcohol problems, and we were able to get some fairly quickly some great results. And so it was a very good fit for me because my personality is one of being a pathological optimist. <laughs> And yeah. I'm a very enthusiastic guy, so the model was just a perfect fit for me. Matthew, um, you're talking about working with adolescents. You seem to really resonate with adolescents. And in your book, Pathways to Change, you, you say when one works with an adolescent, you need to improvise. You need to be able to use humor, um, be playful and be full of surprises. Can you tell us a bit about working with adolescents, especially with difficult adolescents? Well, I really believe that our work with adolescents has to be upbeat, playful, and fun. Um, and I always know I've gotten off to a good start with an adolescent when I hear at the end of the session that that was fun, that yeah. they, they had a good time, they, they thought I was cool, um, they were surprised that I was different than all the other therapists that they worked with, um, and that they want to come back, that they they trust that I'll be able to be their advocate um, and be an intergenerational labor relations arbitrator <laughs> and work both sides of the generational fence and you know champion their cause with their parents uh, get the privileges they want and change the annoying behaviors of the parents that have been driving them crazy um i must be honest your solution focused play therapy book is the very first solution focused book i ever read and i was just completely blown away by the creativity in your book um, you, you, you introduce so many creative exercises and techniques with adolescents and with young children. For example, your imaginary time machine I find works wonderful. Um, interviewing a child as if the problem, the miracle has already happened is also one of the most incredible techniques. Can you tell me a little bit about the creativity you use in your therapy sessions? Well, it's all part of 
the, the fun and the play. And kids like to do things. They express themselves best through action and their inventiveness. Um, so in, in another example of a playful intervention that you can use with children and adolescents uh, is invisible family inventions. So if you were to invent a machine or a gadget that would benefit other kids and families like yours, how would it look and how would it work and how would it benefit all of you? And one really nice example was a family I worked with where the mother was an alcoholic. There were children that had oppositional defiant problems, so depression, anxiety. And um, the 12 year old who was sort of like the junior mom in the family was very intellectual and into science. So her invention was called the family helper machine. Okay. And what that was was it was a tall box like machine with the door on. And whenever a family member was stressed out, they could go in there and it would do something to your brain cells and you'd come out and feel happy. <laughs> and they Brilliant. Even, the children even got mom in the machine with the hope it would change her brain cells and she wouldn't want to drink. And Mom did not come to the first session, but she did come to the second session after going in the family helper machine. Right. So it's an example of how children are like shaman. They can heal their parents in ways that we can through their creativity. And here's a bonus with that intervention. They, the children and adolescents want to go home and build these machines. So they went home and got an old refrigerator box, <laughs> and Dad put a door on it, and they wrote at the top the family helper machine. And they actually and built so it. That's the exciting part of it, how we're tapping into their inventiveness and their creativity, and they're creating their own solutions. Right, Matthew, so you, you, you let them draw this first, explain it to you and draw it. Yes. They, yeah, they do a prototype drawing in the session, and then they like to go home and try and build it. My, my six-year-old said to me today, it's much easier to show you than to tell you. And he, he drew me a picture rather than tell me what he wanted. He drew me a picture. So children love drawing and expressing themselves in a drawing. Yes. In fact, there's been some re research uh, recently that has shown that it's not this eureka thought that people have first and then they draw it, but it's the drawing and the writing down, down externalizing it that leads to the thinking wow. and the development. So it's by putting it on paper that their thinking expands. Exactly. Um, another thing that I do is I call it my family superhero comic strip. Yeah. Where the child or adolescent uh, becomes a superhero with superpowers and using the boxes of the cartoon or the comic strip there to demonstrate how they will conquer the supervillain problem, whatever it is. So here we're using a combination of narrative and solution-focused therapies to externalize the problem and empower the child or adolescent to conquer it. Uh, and I have this great example of this, of a girl, a teenage girl who was uh, 16, who was oppressed by depression and self-injury for about six years. And she was tired of depression, she was tired of being psychiatrically hospitalized for self-injury, suicide attempts, and she was a very good artist. So I had her draw herself uh, and all the superpowers she had. And then the supervillain or depression was represented as Slender Man, who is this sort of monster internet character who is evil, you know, and kills people and things like that. So what happened was Slender Man was shooting its rays at her to try and make her try and kill herself, but she used her power right arm to block the rays and then 
She surprised Slenderman, her question, by throwing loving hearts at it. And it couldn't handle that, and it totally folded and died. And it was great. It, the last frame of the cartoon, she has a great stone. It's, it says drip on it, don't rest in peace, depression, and the day that depression died. And I have to tell you, we, we picked a day in November when she wanted to bury depression and liberate herself from it. And I have to tell you, she greatly reduced her depressive symptoms. She stopped self-injuring. And they created a gravestone in the backyard of their house. That's brilliant. Maybe so that they can look at that now, now depression is in the ground. So depression is buried, and, and um, the family can look at where it's buried as well. Matthew, um, we are very, very excited in, to have you come visit us in South Africa, and we're really lo looking forward right. to all your creative ideas um, um, and to see and, and finally have you down here in South Africa. So if you don't mind, can you give us just a little idea of what we can expect in your workshop um, when you come down to Joburg? Well, people love the videotaped examples of my work. Yeah. They like to see what I'm talking about. And I have some really nice examples. In fact, I will uh, uh, premiere at your workshop a new training video um, DVD that I made of, of a five session therapy with a mother and a daughter that, well, the daughter had problems with marijuana abuse and a lot of uh, oppositional behavior. And she had just turned, turned 18 and she's about to leave the family nest and go to college. And she's very independent and the mother is having a hard time with her leaving because the parents also have uh, pretty serious marital problems and the daughter has been like the resident marital therapist right um, but what was interesting with this family was there was an intergenerational pattern of I'm right and you're wrong in relationships and it goes all the way back to the mom's family of origin where her mother used to always tell her dad, I'm right and you're wrong. And then the mother would do the same thing with the daughter's mom when she was growing up. And now in the family that she's co-created, her and her husband get pushed around by the I'm right, you're wrong pattern. Right. Mother, the daughter also. And the daughter and her boyfriend are pushed around by, by the same pattern. So I have this all on video, and you'll get to see how I externalize that I'm right pattern and unify the family to defeat that pattern, to get it out of the family. And it's a very upbeat, fun uh, session, very solution-focused, and that the family has lots of strengths and, and, and have self-generated pre-treatment changes uh, that they brought back to me that I could utilize to further empower them. Um, so people are gonna see a lot of really great video examples, and we're gonna do some fun, uh, upbeat, skill building exercises. And if possible, if it could be arranged, I would welcome the opportunity to do a live family case consultation with an adolescent. Well, Matthew, we're gonna see what we can set up we cannot wait to see all your videos. Um, I can't wait to experience your upbeat personality. I really want to thank you for sharing um, your time with us. I know you're extremely busy and I know you're still writing your book at the moment. So thank you so much for your time. I'm almost done. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> well done. So thank you. I'm going I'm to... I'm almost done with my second to last chapter, and the last chapter is only like half of a chapter, so and I'll finally be done, and I'm hoping the book, well, definitely we'll have the book for our workshop next year. Well, that is excellent, and Matthew, we cannot wait. Thank you so much for having us. Um, it's been a great honor to have you um, and to speak with you. Same here.
so, see you next year. See you next year. So if you'd like more information, you're welcome to join us on our Facebook page, the Solution Focused Institute of South Africa, or you can follow us on Twitter at SFI Future Focus.